reckon we're going live. Uh, I'm going to turn Twitter off because who needs Twitter when you have airing? <coughs> and uh, I suspect we may be we'll have a little one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh well, there's still two more spots for uh, people. Maybe. Maybe. We can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Is that um, uh, Hime? Welcome, Chi. Welcome, Ayman, Aldo. Everybody, welcome. Great to have you with us. Greetings again from now cloudy London. We have Jens, and uh, and I believe. Uh, well, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to paste. Uh, if I can find it, I'm just going to mention in the. Oh yes, I've got that other thing. Haven't I? I've got a thing over here to tell the people. Um, uh, group tutorial session, and we'll get started. So other people might find they can't get into the hangout. You guys are the lucky nine uh, who who are in. I think is it, is that nine now? We've got nine. Anyway, we you know time. Apparently, I've been led to believe is money. So um, let's not waste it. Uh, so here we are. So I don't know. Many of you may have used uh, hangouts before. Um, great to see so many of you on video. Uh, that's that's fantastic. We don't need the video. For uh, the, you know the, the hangouts, it's kind of handy and fun sometimes. Um, but uh, what we what I usually do at the beginning of these uh, sort of the critical thing is that we all practice screen sharing. Some of you have done this before. But uh, oh, and uh, greetings to we've got uh, to Lassie. But, uh, welcome. So uh, let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that everybody knows how to screen share. So being able to see each other's faces um, is is fantastic. Uh, I find that actually in the longer sessions it's not really that valuable. Uh, so first things first, um, you, there is a series of buttons at the top right of your Hangout that allows you to mute your microphone, turn your camera off. I'm going to turn my camera off now. Um, you, you can all do the same thing. And, and you'll notice uh, along the bottom of the screen, you'll see that um, everybody's um, video images turn into their icons. Um, if, you, if you only have a blue head against a light blue background, you may want to invest in uh, uploading an icon. Um, so then I'm going I'm to go over to the extreme left-hand side. I, I have a bit of trouble with left and right, actually. You'll notice that eventually about me. Uh, and click, um, the for, for me, the fourth button down. When I mouse over it, it's kind of a green monitor with a, an arrow in it. And when I click that, it pops up um, a screen share for Hangouts option where it says, which thing would you like to share? Or select a wi window to show in the video call. I'm gonna, I, I've got two screens here. I'm going to select desktop one. Um, you can select whatever you fancy. And I'm going to start the screen share. And then I'm going to get this infinite regress. And I'm going to fall into the internet. Oh, no. Oh, no. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that out of the way. And uh, you should, in principle, be able to see my desktop. Now, you may not see my desktop. Uh, you, in fact, may only see it as the little um, sort of thumbnail at the very bottom of the screen. Um, and but you can switch backwards and forwards between uh, what's being shared by clicking on the thumbnails at the very bottom. Um, I notice, uh, Eamon, that you still have your video running, so you may want to go again to, I mean, now I'm doing the screen share, if you can see my screen. This is the button here at the top, um, what is this now? This. Which hand is that? That's the right hand. I should know this. Is it? So on the top right hand, there's this thing to turn the camera on and off. Um, often the camera will go off um, any, anyway, but, uh, you know, th th we seem to be fairly stable. So I can see Pete, I'm going to click on Pete's screen. And I can now see uh, Pete's thing. I can see some of his code. That's great. I'm going to click on. I can see Hime. I can see Hime's desktop. That's great. Um, but the rest of you, yeah, do all try, as if you can, in the background, to um, uh, share your share your screens uh, because this is this is really the critical um, thing to be able to do. You don't need a webcam. You know, uh, you can get away without a microphone. But basically, the real value of all of this, in my opinion, is the screen share. And that's just what makes everything, you know, worthwhile. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'm just mentioning uh, we've got the live. If anybody's asking you, um, then uh, this is the. I think this this YouTube link is the live stream of this event. Um, I'm just going to paste that into a few uh, places in case people are interested. Uh, da -dum -ba -dum. Dun, 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 dun. Is that the right place? I hope so. Anyway, okay, yes, excellent. So we've got more people there now set up sharing their screens. Um, this is just sort of preliminary. Um, of course, some of you will have done this before. Yes, a a Ayman, I can now see your screen. Um, yeah. Chi, yes. Chi Long, I can see yours. Hime, I can see yours. 
Kim Sar Sim, I can't see yours at the moment, uh, but don't worry. And M Kraus, yes. So I'm seeing lots of screens. So that's great. And I will go back over here. Um, so of course, the, the topic for today is the, uh, the homework zero, which um, I suspect many of you have already been working on or indeed pairing on. I was just going to review one thing quickly, because I think this has been tripping people up a little bit in the, um, you know, the pairing setup. We, we strongly encourage, you know, we don't, don't require, but you know, we certainly think pairing is lots of fun. Uh, but so if everybody wants to click on my screen so that you can see my screen at the moment. So um, if you, I'm the second, at least on my view, I'm the second from the right. Uh, in the bottom thumbnails. And if you click on that, you should see my screen. And I'm just sharing the um, G Plus community environment here. And you can see a lot of little chats and upcoming events and so on. And I just wanted to highlight, when you're making a pairing event, um, and, uh, we've, we've got to know instructions about the pairing event, the critical thing that you need to do to have the Hangout automatically created for you is to go into Event Options here, click on the Advanced mm -hmm. button, and then click on Hangouts here. This is the critical thing that you need to do if you're making an event. You're saying, oh, yes, I've got some time tomorrow. I'd love to pair with somebody from somewhere around the world. It's a great way to meet people. Um, you can, you know, you've done everything else. The critical thing that you need to do to make this kind of event a Hangout event where it will generate one of these Hangouts for you is click on this uh, Hangouts option in the advanced event options. Uh, because, of course, uh, Google Plus supports, you know, much wider variety of things, you know, events that have a, a physical and don't have a, um, I mean, take place in a physical environment but they don't have a Hangout. So uh, anyway, do remember to click that. Um, is that, is that that's clear to everybody? Any, any questions so far? No. Hmm? I'll, I'll take that. Yes, there's a no. Good, good show. I, I see, yes, people, people are, are following um, in, in the chat. I, I, as I'm talking, oh, that was the other thing I was going to turn on for people who are watching on the stream. Um, there was, oh, Q&A. I should turn on Q and A, um, and yes, this is a bit of an experiment. Um, yeah, mm, I don't know if it's going to work at all. Anyway, well, we'll maybe leave that. Um, so, if it's off. You can only turn this feature on and off before broadcast. Aha. Okay. Well, that's uh, my bad. Then I'll have to. Turn that. Okay. So no questions and answers from things. So you're, you're the lucky people in the chat, and we'll focus on the, focus on the chat. OK. Um, so group tutorial on homework, homework zero. Um, first up, um, any questions from you about the tutorial? I, I guess what, what, uh, about, about homework zero. What I'll say is, is that I've got my VM set up here. And you know, we can look at anything related to the VM, the homework zero. You know, uh, in the absence of any questions, I would just sort of start going through you know, some bits and pieces and talking Ruby stuff. But does anybody have any specific questions related to, you know, Ruby, programming in the VM, homework zero that you want to, to, to bring to me now? Yeah, I had a question, Sam. OK, great. Pete, yes. Go, go right ahead, Pete. <laughs> um, the, uh, I got all the, the homework parts done except for the third part. Yes. And I got tripped up on formatting numbers. OK. Right. Uh, do I need to import any libraries to be able to do that? I don't believe you do. I don't believe you do. I, I think I have successfully uh, navigated this part of the homework without importing any libraries. Um, I think this is the kind of situation where, um, and I don't know if this is official policy, but I find Google really, really helps. Um, often the, the challenge is, is sort of formulating the question in precisely the way that we the way that we want. Um, so uh, I mean, the, what, what you want to do here is, I mean, I can see you've got at the top of your, your file there, you've got to include the propagated instead of a leading dollar sign and so on and so yeah. forth. Um, uh, we could, you know, if we go, and, if we go back to, to my screen here and, um, and I grab another, have I got another window? No, this, this will do. Um, here, I guess the way I would be to, I mean, uh, what I would be tempted to do is just sort of type into Google. Let I mean, just describe the problem to me in your own words, Pete. What would you? What would, how would you describe it? Okay, um, I've I've looked up a couple of uh, articles on uh, Stack Overflow. Sure. Problem, and 
they all seem to be talking about uh, using uh, a, a money class to sure. format okay. US dollars. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, there, there, there's lots of different ways. But let's, well, what I was hoping for is that you would just um, articulate, okay. not, not well, what you've done, but what, what, is it, what is the functionality, the feature that we're looking for? For the method price as a string, Yeah. I want to be able to call that. Yeah, and you want to be able to return... put the instance variable price. Um, the price should be stored as right. a float. And I want it to output a string in the format dollar sign right. and whatever yeah. the current. The so, so in that case, is. you're sort of reading out to me the um, the um, you know what the, I think the problem description, which is which is perfectly um, perfectly fine. What I was sort of going for was like a, a natural language sort of summary <laughs> of like what the output of things. What basically we want to do is like uh, dollar formatting in Ruby. It's, it's yeah. kind of a, a quick summary of that. So we've got here like I mean you may have looked at some of these string overflow things. But, um, for example, here, how do I convert a decimal string value for dollars and cents in Ruby? Um, we've got something like this, and it's saying you can come up with a little bit of Ruby code. Mm -hmm. um, here's, a, here's a little something there. Um, I'm not sure if that's completely relevant. What's this, person, what's this person doing? I want to read these values in. Somebody, that's somebody breaking something up into different things. And have a look. Um, we've got some also some blog posts. Yeah, some other people obviously using that money thing that you're talking about there. Uh, this this here is um, more the kind of thing that I sort of fell back on would be to work with um, this sort of th this sort of thing. Have you seen have you seen this before? No. No, yeah. I mean I, I, and so, you know, one of the things I and as you all know having watched a few of my videos, um, you know that I just love the IRB. I just love, um, if I can get to it, uh, over here. Here we've got the IRB. So I've just taken the um, code from that blog there, and I'm going to try and... It's not going to let me. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to th this thing. I'm going to try and copy that again from here. So this person is doing that. And then I'm going to drop back into here, and hopefully I can paste that into here. There we go. So it's probably going to tell me that there's no value. So we could put... I mean, just in here we could do... Oh, I don't know. Let's put in 10 like that. There we go. How does that look? Beautiful. There you go. So, I mean, I think that that's, um, you know, uh, obviously you, you'd already done some Google searches of that sort of sort of form. Um, I, I think it's sometimes it just takes, um, you know, uh, a, a bit more, you know, when you're more experienced with Ruby, you know, you know to ignore some things and say, oh, that seems more complicated than it needs to be, and you focus on other things. But... Um, that's the kind of thing. Good show. Um, so, does anybody else have? Uh, I mean, assuming that we are. I mean, I'm not uh, jumping ahead too much, Peter. But by saying we've sort of addressed your issue. Yeah. Does Does anybody else have any questions? I had a little bit of problem. He may. Yes, he may. Do go ahead. So yeah, I'm obviously doing something wrong here, but um, working fine on my computer. But uh, when I no, go ahead, yes, go ahead. Check it, it, it says that um, it says that it function is not defined properly and it basically fails. So um, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong with this? Okay, well let's have a look. I mean, one of the critical things, first of all, is it's difficult for me to to, to help or because I'll get a grip on the problem until I know which of the numbers of things that you're working on. So at the moment, um, I can't see. I mean, I can see you've got a homework zero group there. Uh, so you're working on the max. To yeah, um, question. It, uh, oh, yeah, which which is which is the specific thing that you're having a problem with? Uh, the the max to n um, function. It says that it's not defined. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with that. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a well. Um, one thing here. Uh, so let's. Yeah. If you um uh, adjust the size of the editor again, so that we can see both the output and the g edit, that would be really handy. Okay. Hold on. Um, Oh, uh, Kim. Uh, while you're doing that, I see Kim Sierra is asking about where can he download the Homework Zero instructions. They're all in the course site. Um, if I just go and I've got them here. I mean, this this is the link here into the homework. There. So if I if I um just grab that, I can paste that in for for Kim Sierra. Uh, I hope. 
Yeah, that's that's the link. You need to be registered for the course, and that that should link you straight into the homework zero instructions there. Um, okay, so right, so we're working on max to n, and so you're saying you you were getting like no method error, but you've got Ruby homework zero dot rb there, and it's I'm not I'm not seeing any errors being generated. Yeah, exactly. But um, as you can see, that this works fine on my computer, but um, as soon as I uh, try to submit it, it says. Uh, method, uh, something like method not. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Sorry. So, okay. So, you're getting an error from the autograder. So, yes. Can, yeah, can, yeah. can you um, swap over to the autograder uh, output and let's see the autograder output? If you, I believe uh, you've, got it in the win you've got it in the window behind. So, if you scroll down, so this is you've, d you've uploaded the file into the autograder. Uh, hold on. There you go. Oh, oh, it's again. I think if you just press the down arrow, um, you'll move down within that screen. No, this is really slow. I... You think the VM is really slow? Uh, well, I'm I'm wondering if it's if it's misinterpreting your mouse clicks. So you're trying to scroll up and down with the mouse. There. Oh, anyway, here we go. So, so there you go. but yeah, rather than using the mouse, can you use the cursor keys? You know the up and down arrow keys that you have on your keyboard. Try using them instead of the mouse. You might find that, particularly if there is a bit of lag, that the cursor keys are an easier way to go. OK. So here we go. You've got returns of the value of the element if just one element. And so you were saying, no, no, OK, so you, you, you want to take us to the, oh, there you go, OK. So Ruby intro part one, sum to n should be defined. Um, OK, undefined method, sum to n. So, yeah, the, so the key thing here is it's telling us that there's an undefined method sum to n question mark. All right, so now let's go back to um, your gedit file and have a look at the file that you submitted. There you go. Okay, so let's fill in that. That's the max to n question mark. So let's go to where we think sum to n question mark is uh, defined in this file. There you go. Oh, okay. So I, I can't see sum to n question mark anywhere in this file. Can you? Okay, okay. I may have uh, named it wrong. But do you think that's like significant enough to create this? Okay, I may have named it wrong. Yeah, I, I thought that's an easy, an easy um, I I issue. Yeah, I mean, easy, easily done. Easy, easily done. I mean, I think this is the kind of um, thing that l later on we'll see with um, uh, specs and when you get onto homework one. Um, there, there are, you know, there's, there's sort of an approach to coding that, that avoids these kinds of things that can end up wasting a lot of your time. It's, um, you know, uh, one thing I would, I would make a recommendation of just looking at your code is I would, I would try and just indent only two spaces. Um, I notice at the bottom of your G edits that you've got the tab yeah. width set to eight. Um, you can change that um, if you click the um, down triangle. Uh, next to t you see the bottom of your G edits editor. If you click there, I click it onto two there, and uh, and re and reformat. I mean, I mean whether it's four or two is is a you know it is to a certain extent a, a, a personal preference. I mean, I noticed there what you're doing though um, with these. You've got your iterating here in a very Java or other sort of Algol style programming language thing. You're kind of doing four p in and then o to s four like so. Um, you know, obviously, you can you can program in that style in Ruby. Um, ideally, you want to try and move away from that and move towards uh, using iterators, but but uh, uh, you know, such as using each and and so on. Uh, but that's just, that's just sort of a general a general tip. Um, yeah. Any any other questions? So it sounds like uh, Hime is is reasonably satisfied there. A, a man, were you um, uh, not able yes, to share I'm your here. screen? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, a man, did, were you not able to share your screen? Yeah, yeah. I don't know where the screen goes. Okay, it's here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, just, just checking that you're able to do it. That, 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 that was. Uh, uh, yeah. And Kim, Kim Sa, were, were you able to? I mean, if, if it's just the case that you, you're very happy screen sharing and you you know haven't got anything to show at the moment, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was. Uh, you know, confident uh, feeling able to do that. Um, any uh, other questions from anybody else on on approaches to the homework or um, other other issues at all?
I'll just take a take a sip of uh, tea here because I'm I'm British. It's a uh... yes. Well, Kim Shah, yes. The so Kim was saying in the chat chat there. This is you know he needs to study the problem. But yeah, the, this um, you know uh, session intended you know for people who've already done done a bit of work on the uh, on the on the homework zero. So um, we can see uh, Hime there in the background re re uh, re running doing his upload through the through the autograder. Um, yeah, so Chi's just asking in the um, in the chat there, um, you know, for Ellie and Array use it. Or, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the, the basically in in most of the time in Ruby you will almost never use the for construct. Um, I mean, it, it, it m might be necessary in certain cases, but it, it's, uh, you know, re really, you want to move away from the idea of constructing a loop where you say, right, I'm gonna, what's the index of numbers that I'm gonna move through and looking things up, and you want to say, I have some sort of collection, say an array, and I want to do something to each element in the array. So you you want to use your Ruby code and say, okay, here's my array, you know, and do each. And then specify the operation that you want to take place on that, um, uh, you know, on, 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 that, on those elements. I'll just answer. Uh, so Kim Shah, well, y yeah, I mean, you're welcome to stay. Although, of course, you know, this is all being recorded. So if you don't have any of your own, you know, questions, and you're not going to take advantage of the interactive component of, of this thing, then um, you know, uh, you know, feel free to drop out, and you can catch up on the video, which may make more sense once you've actually had a look through the, through, through the problem. Um, uh, but so Chi is then asking, how would you use each iteration with multiple line of logic inside the loop? Um, and I'm not sure that I completely understand the question there. Um, yeah, um, I, and I guess I mean what I'll do maybe is uh, we'll switch over to, uh, to to me and I'll show some examples of what I mean about the about looping. Um, so if we've got the terminal here, and I don't know if that's a bit small for people to see. Um, you can of course try increasing the size of that. Um, but so, for example, say that I've got, uh, you know, my elements. I've got my iterator array there, one, two, three. Let's let, let's call that array, like so. So I've got I've got an array of one, two, three. I wonder if I make the font size of the terminal bigger there, easily zoom in. Oh, I can. Oh, 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 now you can potentially see it. All right, is that? No, I have to do Control Shift plus. Oh, yeah, even bigger. Ooh, better. Bigger is apparently better, according to some people. So now I've got my array, and as we've seen, I can do simple things like this. So I can kind of take each element of the array, let's say E, and then I can say, let's just print them out. So I, so I do that. Um, and, and what um, Chi seems to be asking is, how would you use each uh, write multiple lines of logic in an easy to read way? Well, I mean, uh, what you do often in, in Ruby is if you've got sort of some several sets of things that you want to do, then you would use this do uh, rather than the um, curly braces, and you do something like this, and we do multi-line. So then we'd say we might say we want to have e is equal to e times six, like so. You know, some operation. I'm just sort of making this up, and then we want to say, oh, I don't know. Let's do puts e like so, uh, and then we might say end, and then you know we have this, and that, that hasn't indented one to be nicely. I probably I didn't need to press the double spaces. It was indenting for me. Um, but so, you know, this is the kind of logic that we might end up seeing in a, in our file. I don't know if that uh, answers your question at all, Chi. Um, and le level me, hello there. Great to have you uh, with us, Chi. I'm glad that answered your your question. Um, so, anybody else got any other questions or or thoughts related to homework zero to Ruby to using the, the VM? Ah, so M K Rouse is asking. After e is equal to e times six, the values are saved in the array, and I believe that they are not in this case. The array is still actually just one, two, and three. Um, what's happening here with the, the the iterator is we're basically we're receiving, um, you know, uh, each element from the array, but we're basically declaring what's kind of a local variable here. So we've got this this e, so we can do things to e, but this it, it's not going to have any impact on the actual values of the the array. There there are um, you know certain operations that you can do where uh, you know and this is the kind of thing that I don't always remember precisely. If we go to the Ruby docs and we look at, for example, so all, all the stuff um, related to what you can do with uh, these, I, I believe it's, it's, it's innumerable 
I think is the thing that we want to look at. Is that right? Enumerable .html like so, and the docs, you know, really here. Anyway, so enumerable, enumerable. So these are all the kinds of um, you know operations we can do. There's you know things like that. Each is defined in here, is it not? Or at least some versions of it. Or collect and so on. Actually, I, yeah, I don't think that any of these have the exclamation mark. The kind of like each. There's there's no kind of like each and then make changes. Um, they tend to be these operations tend to be uh, not not destructive. They don't have any any, any impact on the underlying thing. Let's have a look at some of the destructive. I mean, we've got yeah. The, 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 I guess for array, we've got like the collect exclamation mark here. So you can see like with collect, if we look at this, this um, basically invokes block once for each element of self, and it creates a new array containing the elements returned by the block. So collect is sort of related to each. There's a series of things. So I can do something like this. I can do uh, array collect, and then I can do my little things here, and I can say the different elements, and I can say e times 6. And so this will now return me an array that has, you know, the, these things that I previously printed out, but the array itself is not, is not changed. However, if I do um, this operation, and I say array collects uh, aggressively, then that will now uh, change the underlying array. So that's why, you know, the, these you know, it's important to, the, the, the exclamation marks at the end of the methods are, are quite important. So, um, so oh, level means aren't saying, I find the Code Academy version, guys, if you have microns, you, you're more than welcome to, to do it in audio, but also chat, very good as well. Level means saying, I find the Code Academy version Ruby tutorial quite basic, but awesome, whatever. I started learning from RubyMonk. Do I need to advance all the lessons on Ruby soon, or can I keep like a slow pace? Well, I think that all depends. Um, I would say, um, you know, it, personally, I would. I mean, then this is a, this is a personal opinion. I would say that the most effective way of learning coding is pair programming, um, and whether the the material that you're using is Code Academy or RubyMonk or like the Homework Zero or the up soon to be released Homework One, which is going to be some more Ruby stuff uh, coming out on Saturday. Um, as long as you're pair programming with somebody. It's really like kind of an accelerator being placed on your on your learning. Um, uh, I, I don't. I I teach this course um, for my students at Hawaii Pacific University, and I do have them complete uh, the Code Academy Ruby tutorial uh, in parallel with the course. I kind of break it up so they do a bit of it each week, and I've kind of I'm interleaving. I think they will now finish the Ruby Code Academy this week and they will be starting on maybe I've sort of broken up the homework one uh, more Ruby stuff Ruby calisthenics as it's called and and they're kind of so they're, they're kind of finishing the Ruby uh, code Academy track at about the time when they're sort of halfway through homework one um, and I, I kind of try and design it so that there's the right degree of overlap between those between those things so it's sort of you know it, it depends a little bit on work on what works for you um, I don't know if that answers your Question level me. I mean, I, I imagine that you're probably aware of the big uh, G plus community we have uh, of of pair, you know the pairing going on. Um, obviously, you know it might say, oh well, you know when when can I find people to pair with? Um, you know we've got other pairing sessions coming up uh, today, tomorrow, and on Monday. Um, anybody who even just fancies the idea of doing a pair can post an event here and see who else joins. Um, so you know the, the idea is to make it. Uh, you know, trivially easy to, to meet up with other people from the course and uh, do pairing events in Hangouts, just like these ones uh, we are in now. So, um, well, I, I, I'm pleased that I think we've covered a few uh, good good things there. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions or, or thoughts, concerns? Um, I, I, I noticed... Um, you know, do, do do interrupt me. I'm just gonna kind of babble for a bit now because that's that's sort of. Um, I noticed that um, uh, a Amon, I think it was, had his gedit open. Uh, I noticed he didn't have the file browser on the side. That's a really handy thing. Um, I mean, one of the things with the VM is while it ensures that we all have the same libraries, and I've probably mentioned this, and you're probably bored of hearing me saying it. Maybe um, there there are you know a number of new things you may never have used the Ubuntu Unity environment before. It, you know, like for example, if I mouse over the text editor here, I get a series of options 
uh, that you know are normally hidden, and and you might not necessarily find them. Things like I, I don't know if Eamon, that you had found. We've got things like uh, we've got preferences here, and you can make sure that the files will display line numbers, which I find hugely useful. Hugely useful. Um, you can you know with here with the view, you can you know toggle on and off this side panel, uh, and you know navigate your file system to find your files, which I find I find hugely useful. Um, Aldo's mentioning we can we can generate Ruby programs on our smartphones with Android or Android with Ruboto. Uh, indeed, we can. Uh, Ruby just uh, getting become more popular by the moment, as I understand it. Although JavaScript and Python, you know, still very popular as well. Um, um, many websites still being written in PHP for some reason, but there you go. Um, yes. So any um, let's see. Uh, I don't know if we've heard from Tulasi. Did you have um, any uh, anything? Any try? Has it? Ha I guess who here have the majority? We we've all finished. Um, <laughs> no, well PHP, you know, extremely widespread. Um, Tulasi just got the VM installed. Well done. Um, yes, I mean I, I I programmed in PHP before I programmed in Ruby. I really love the PHP uh, documentation. Actually, I think one of the best things about PHP is the sort of user community and uh, and the documentation. Um, however, I just um, yes, I, I I I really enjoyed the switch from uh, from PHP to Ruby, just in terms of the simplicity with which I get certain things done with Active Record, as opposed to writing out all of these uh, SQL things. Although you know, now there's things like PHP Cake and so on. But uh, yes, I mean there's a bit of um, snob snobbishness about the you know Python and Ruby communities looking down on PHP when it clearly is used so extensively and powers uh, you know many many websites. Effectively, um, yes, indeed. So yeah, Tunasi's got the VM installed. M ground level me him a chi long amen elder. Well, I think it's, it seems like everybody's had a chance to to ask a, a question. Yeah, no, Ruby's Ruby's fun. Um, uh, Pete just saying he's enjoying Ruby as well. I think um, so. A lot of my students uh, often say like, oh yes, they really enjoy, particularly compared to Java, they they really enjoy it. Well, I mean. Uh, I guess what I will do is I will stay online. I mean, I was sort of anticipating this might run for another 25 minutes. If you guys have exhausted your questions um, and have, have heard as much as you want to hear of, from me, then feel free to um, to drop out and carry on uh, with with the homework. So I'll, I'll run a you know subsequent group tutorials on homework one, on 1.5 and two, and so on as they come up in future weeks. Um, and Hime is saying, can we have a look at your code? Well, you could have a look at some of my code. In a general sense, I'm not going to show you uh, my answers to the um, homework zero things. But uh, if you were interested in seeing some of my my general code, I could show you. I've got Ruby mine here. Um, what have we got? Uh, let's go and find something. Well, I mean, uh, local support is probably the the project that I'm I'm most the Ruby on Rails project that I'm most heavily involved in at the moment. And so, um, well, I, I can show you a little. Um, Oh, actually, that's not updated to the latest thing. But so th this is a this is a full Ruby on Rails app um, that's got uh, you know all cucumber features and RSpec and so on. Um, we've got a um, this um, yeah. Let me. I just we had a nice improvement in the code here that we just I would love to show you. Let me just go and check uh, where we are here. Let me grab maybe a new. Have I got something that's going to be sensible? I could just that was me doing some Python. Uh, let me drop back into local support. I mean, oh, we're in staging. If we check out uh, develop, let's see. If we've got. Yeah, well, I'm getting some uh, echo from somebody, but uh, get full origin develop. Hmm. I may not have pulled in the. So we do have one of the things that we do have. I guess since we're looking at this, um, if you're interested in doing a project, so it's um, well, I'll back up. You've heard, none of you've heard this before, but um, the Berkeley students all do um, pro, you know Ruby on Rails projects in parallel with their course. We have um, you know Agile Ventures, where which lists a number of projects that students can get involved in to um, you know practice their Ruby and their Rails skills. Um, so you know, there's the local support. So if you want to find out more about the particular project, and you know, we meet up and do these pair program sessions uh, and so on, all the information is is there. Uh, let me go to the repository. If 
for that for a moment. Um, so it's all open source. It's all stuff for. Uh, uh, here we go. Yep, yep. So I think. Yeah, we got. Um, let's see if I can find that. Is it, is it just a bit of code is in here? Yeah, this is it. This is it. So I hadn't yet pulled in the pull request. So this is, you know, uh, uh, John Morbacker is one of the previous alumni from the course, and he's, um, um, uh, you know, collaborating with us. Uh, we had a pair programming session the other day, and we, we produced some code that I was, uh, I think, uh, reasonably proud of. So <laughs> just like looking for trying to look for something uh, that, uh, you know, was worth seeing. So if I, he submitted this code from his, uh, you know, through, through GitHub, I'm just sort of pulling that in. I hope it was into the right place, uh, yeah, into develop. And so now, if I go back to my environment here, yes, I can pull. Oh, just make sure we pull it to the right place. There we go. We can pull that code in, and I can show you here. Um, so if I increase the size of this. Um, oh, it looks like he's changed it even further. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's. Um, so we can see one of these. Let me. I'll give you some context on 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 this. Um, so we have this non-profit organisation in Northwest London, which is where I'm based, and um, this is the, the Harrow Community. They, they, they well, they're Project Action Harrow, and we built this site for them, Harrow Community Network, which is based on the local support project. And as you can see, it's a sort of directory of charities, and we've got these, you know, this map going on. Um, and so the organisation, if we go and look at the code here. The organization, this extends from, extends from Active Record, which um, you'll hear about in I think, the lectures that have just been released, actually. And so we have a process of geocoding things where we um, uh, need to check where the latitude and longitude. And so we were working on this model and uh, adjusting the code here. And the it had been kind of a bit um, unpleasant. And I, I, I was quite pleased in, in the session we managed to work on changing this so it's a bit more readable. So we now have this uh, operation where it's checking, you know, when should you run the geocode, and it now reads sort of address changed or address present and not geocoded, and so you can kind of almost just from the, um, you know, the way it's structured, you can kind of work out what's going on. It's self-documenting code. I, I don't know that it's quite beautiful code by Armando's standards, but uh, one of the things that made this much more comprehensible was pulling out. Can you see this other Ruby method here? We, we kind of created the not geocoded method, not geocoded question mark, and pulled in these things relating to whether the latitude and longitude were blank were in here, and that allowed this method to make much more sense as it stood. So, um, um, you know, that, that's a bit of code that I'm re re reasonably proud of recently. I don't know if that um, uh, meets Hime's, um, uh, Hime's requirements there. So, and Aldo's asking, I almost forgot, Sam, what tool to recommend to generate programs on Ruby? With more features like IntelliSense, I'm not sure what um, IntelliSense. Is. I'm using RubyMine here, um, which I really like. I, I love lots of features of this uh, in terms of. Let's. Uh, it's a good one to show. Uh, for example, you know, uh, let's see. For example, I got here. Like so. So here, this is actually a bit of a. a, a not, this is a code I'm. I'm much less proud of. It's. 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 It's looking a bit smelly. Um, here, but we can see, for example, one of the powerful features of RubyMine is I can click here on Find by Email. I can do uh, as it com Command B, and it will take me automatically to the place where that's defined. Now, in this case, it's it's part of the uh, Active Record mechanic uh, mechanics. It's using method m missing because this um, Active Record um, operation Find by Email, it's not defined itself directly. It sort of jumps to the method missing is what's going to handle it. Um, I guess if I go, and I, I can sort of. We could update there, but this does a better example there. Um, the update attributes there—that's an important part of Active Record. I'm actually by just hitting command uh, command B on my OS X here, I'm jumping straight to the method definition, which I find really, really, really helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, so Aldo saying he's got RubyMine on Windows 8, but is a beginner on Ubuntu. Yes, yes, and um, you know, I, I think you can successfully run RubyMine on on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is good to get get used to. I think uh, it's difficult to run a full rail stack on Windows. Um, one of the things, uh, I mean, yeah, I think it, it is going to be quite painful. I mean, I remember when I switched from I used to be a Windows user. Uh, this is about six years. About, I switched to Mac about six years ago, and there was definitely about three or four months where I was kind of in a a, a bit stuck, uh, I should say, and kind of like not having much fun. Um, 
I, I think with, you know, once you've made the switch, you can make them more... I, also, going to Ubuntu Unity, um, was it 18 months ago or so, uh, it definitely uh, took me a long time to get comfortable in the environment. I mean, you know, uh, a month or two, or at least my, my progress was slowed during that period. Um, uh, again, I think the critical thing is pairing. Pair, 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 I would say. It's just, there's so many things that, you I mean, you can, I mean, I did ultimately work out how to change the keyboard layouts and so on in Ubuntu by, you know, searching forums and posting to them. But if you can just be pairing with, I mean, promiscuously, that's, that's the key term. Um, every day, pair with a different person. And every, every person will be able to teach you maybe one little new thing about the environment. And if you pair with a different person every day, you know, for, for now until the rest of forever, uh, you'll, you'll just, it'll be great fun, and you'll learn all of these little things that I think are sometimes, you know, uh, painful to learn any other way. I mean, in the ideal world, all of these interfaces would be somehow so intuitive that they would just, just work, and we wouldn't have to, have to do it. Um, I, I think maybe, you know, pairing shouldn't be an excuse for people to, to, to poorly design their interfaces, but sometimes there's just, you know, there's just differences in the way these different desktops and things work, and pairing with somebody is often the very, very fastest way to find out uh, how that works. So uh, we've got some new people in, maybe, come and gone. Uh, nobody's stuck around. Um, I've, I've waxed lyrical more than, more than I, well, I, you know, I'm a bit of a chatterbox, really, me. Um, Sam, uh, I, could you um, on, dedicate a little bit of time to regular expressions? I certainly could. I certainly could. Uh, what would you like to know? about regular expressions, Pete? I was having trouble negating a search. Right, so you want to search and make sure that something is not present. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I wonder if I can quickly even, if my regular expressions are good enough to do that. But so we could say, like, hello, and we would like to maybe, for example, not, we would like to not match uh, the hell in there, uh, let's say, oh, well, I now have to work out is it there? The twiddle. So, what would be the regular version not to match to, to negate it? Now, I always re can remember usually that this is the way to find uh, something that's not an H. There, is that is that right? So that's going to match there that it's not H at um, at that point. So, I mean, for example, we could be doing something like this, where I would be here. The f I'm saying. I'm basically, by using the, the square brackets here, I'm declaring a group. And I'm saying that this first element here can match anything that's not an H. And this next one can manage, match anything that's not an E. So if I match that one there, I think it's going to like match the E and L matches being not H and not E. But so if I get it, I mean, I'm not saying this is the most efficient way to do this. Uh, and we can, we can look up a maybe more efficient way in a moment. But so... Uh, this construction here uh, basically is saying I want to find a letter that's not an H, or find a symbol that's not an H, one that's not an E, one that's not an L, and then one that's not an L in a sequence. And so that one won't match now there. We, we cannot find this sequence, uh, this regular expression in that thing. I, I, I say that, however, uh, I, I, I suspect there's a much cleaner way to do that. Sorry, go on. I thought the, the carrot symbol was for the beginning of the string. It is, but it has a different <laughs> meaning in this context. So, I mean, right. we can, for example, here, I could say I want to match something that's not H, but I want the carrot to be beginning of the string here, and that shouldn't match because H is the first letter in the string. So, so it has a different meaning in these two contexts. Okay. Um, but, uh, again, it's sort of... Um, I, I imagine that you've been using Rubula and other things to sort of play around with it rather than the, you know, the command line. There's, you know, of course, Stack Overflow uh, talking about these things. I think that there's other, there, I mean, I think there's a, there's a variety of other, I, I, you can use the exclamation mark to do an, other kinds of negations. Uh, oh, Eamon's left by, by Eamon, thanks for joining us. Um, I find that often what I end up doing uh, is I usually type in regular expression syntax like so, and there's a site that usually, uh, I think it's this one actually. I, I, I'm, quite, actually I'm quite a big fan of regexpal.com actually. I quite like, if that's the one I'm thinking of, 
Yeah, because this one, unlike Rubula, this can have, you can have lots of test data. So you can have, um, you know, like, hello, uh, goodbye, uh, hello, friends. You can have a series of different things like this. And, oh, I don't know if I can spell. And, and then you can write your regex here, like so, and it will show you all of the matches that you get against all, all of the different lines. I really like that. I think that's because I think Rubula doesn't... Um, Excuse me, the Rubula, it just has a, it's a single string. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. That's just, I love testing things immediately. Can I do, if I say hello and goodbye and hello friend there, and we say hello. Oh, no, it will do. It will do. Okay, that was just my, <laughs> Rubula rocks. Everybody use Rubula. Um, but uh, what I do like is this uh, regular expressions reference, uh, which I tend to use uh, to kind of go through and see about the different things. I, th I think I do. Is that right? Yes, table of, uh, the table con contents. Uh, I often find when I, when I search for things in here that this is, yeah, capturing groups. But I mean, not necessarily every single uh, thing in here is supported in, in Ruby. I feel like maybe this is not the one I'm used to going to. Record expressions reference. Yeah, hmm. regular expressions.info is the one I use. Um, a, yeah, a, there was, a table. There's a, there's a, yeah, I mean, there's a page. I thought there was a page in here which, rather than telling me what it does, that was actually sort of a list of the different... Maybe I'm thinking of a different site. But there, were, there was one that just sort of went through, you know, what all of the different symbols uh, could possibly mean. And I kind of, I kind of liked that. Uh, although maybe it is in there, so, and I'm just you know spacing on being able to find. It's got, I don't think it was the examples. Oh, is it characters? Something in here. That's sample regular expressions. I don't really want. I mean, obviously regular expressions. There's there's kind of like. I feel like I'm jumping around in this site in a way that I don't usually like. But uh, anyway, um, I thought there was a. Tutorial. I don't know really what tutorial. I want them. It's this reference below. You can find many example patterns. Yes, that's handy. But reference. Okay, maybe there is different subsections in here. Uh, yeah, and characters. No, still. Uh, anyway. Um, hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, I think you can probably do. You can probably do things with sort of like a, a group and a negation of it at the front. I mean, often the thing is like, so we could possibly do, does it work like this? We do negation on hell like that? Yeah. So I think, you know, that we can use the normal, what I would call brackets, but I think is in the parentheses, around something and then put a negation in front of it. And uh, that will, you know, not match it. And that's that, that's probably the cleaner way of doing it, I would, I would guess. And I saw, saw a lot of people talking about using non-capturing... Um, oh, non-capturing non groups. For, yeah. for efficiency. Yeah, yeah, that's... I mean, I usually don't worry about efficiency. I, I, I'm um, um, a big fan of, of not worrying about efficiency until efficiency um, has become a problem. Uh, yeah, we tend to want to avoid Ah, what's the word? We want to avoid uh, premature optimization at all costs, really. Um, right. But yeah, is this the, well, they, well, no, it, it, I think it is a question. Is it quest, a question mark? Yeah, colon at the front of the of the thing. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of handy in some ways. Just like if you if you if you are constructing a, a long regular expression and there's a lot of capturing groups and you're going to get all the matches out of them and then you have to like say, okay, I, I'm going to get number seven out of the twelve different possible groups. Then I think sometimes it can just make your your syntax a little bit your your code a little bit easier to read if you're you know you only actually can you can only pull out two matching groups from the from the regex. Okay, well um, you know I, I I I'm willing to declare this first uh, group drill a reasonable success. Um, I don't know how how it feels for you, but uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, any any other further thoughts or questions or issues relating to the course? Or I mean, let's, let's throw it out now. You know, anything at all, really.
Uh, hello. Uh, you, you know, I, I might get uh, off topic here, but uh, mm. I didn't have time to sell my, you know, my virtual box. Mm. And I'm I installed the guest edition. Oh yes, guest editions. Yes, yes. Yeah, guest editions. I, I'm typing in the terminal RB, and it's uh, I I I read here RB waiting to receive. That. That C C C. Hmm. Okay, can you share your screen with us so we can see what you're describing? That's yeah. the big advantage of Google Hangouts. I, maybe you joined it at the beginning. We went through and all practiced sharing our screens. There's a. Oh, if you go over to the left-hand side of the uh, Google Hangout, there is a green uh, button. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, okay. So. Okay. So you've typed. Know, this, must, this might yeah. be after topic, but. No, 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 no. That's that's fine. You know, this is a group tutorial session where we want to help fix your issues. Now, there. I mean, you've typed RB. I'm mm -hmm. not sure why you've. T why have you typed RB? Uh, I did it before yesterday. I, mu I must have. Uh, must have. So yeah. Some. In this situation, I would type Control C. I would type Control C. That's what I'd type here. So you hold down the Control key and press C, and then I'd hit Return a couple of times, probably just for good measure. And uh, you're trying to get to the interactive Ruby prompt, are you? Yeah. Yeah, so you need to type IRB. IRB? Yes. Ah, interactive Ruby. Yeah. I ah. think RB probably ends up being some other program yeah, that's, that's waiting it. for some materials. So, so what does con Control-C do? Now, Control-C basically kills the currently running process in, wow. in Unix. Aha. Uh -huh. So, okay. if, if, so if you get no, kind of stuck, it's, it's a good thing to know. To, I should to have, that. So, yeah, I should have typed uh, IRB since the beginning. Yes. Oh. Oh. All right. So I, thank love, you I love the problems that are easy to solve. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I could have just uh, searched in the line. That, that's why I, saw, I said that I might, I might be going off topic. Oh, no, 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 but that, that, that's on topic because basically the topic is helping you guys. So, and I was saying, I'm throwing it out you know, now. We've, I think we've covered. All because these. you know the the title says Rob intro. Yeah, no, no, it did. But I, but I, I you know, I, I think we, we certainly we spent fifty minutes, you know, covering those and a few other things and, and this that, and the other. So this was definitely exactly the right time to ask about well, those other things. Thank you, Cool. Well, uh, I will just say, um, you know, thanks so much to everybody for taking part. Um, uh, apologies to those in the uh, who are watching on the stream and maybe couldn't ask questions. I will try very hard to remember next time to to activate the Q and A app. Before I start the broadcast, um, you know we'll be doing it again uh, next week. I want to wish you, you know, all the best of luck with the course. It, it's great to have you with us. I know I speak for David Armando uh, and the whole, whole rest of the team when I say we really enjoy having you involved and you know uh, really look forward to you know continuing on this journey with you over the rest of the semester. We hope we'll see you in uh, 169.2, the follow-up course as well, and uh, you know. Definitely do do. I know, I know that you're pairing. Carry on that pairing. You know we we, we love it. And uh, I hope. I guess I just. Well, I'm sort of wrapping up. Uh, any uh, any particular questions on the the pairing? Has that been work? I know Pete, you were in some pairing sessions. Has that been working out well? Any problems or issues that we need to solve as in terms of how the pairing is working? Yeah, I, it's. Uh, I've only been in two sessions. Um, the first one was great. There was only two of us in it, and mm. we got on. Uh, and I, I did most of the driving in that one because I was sure. really an inexperienced programmer. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I think he got a lot out of that as well. Good show. Uh, the second one was a bit more confusing because there were bandwidth issues, people were dropping in and out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it, it took us a lot longer to get the uh, the assignment done than it would have done me on my own. But then it, it was uh, a benefit to to see how other people would approach the, the same problem. Yeah, well. yeah. I mean, I, and I think, um, you know, for, for, since we've got a community of students from all around the world, some of whom have got, you know, very restricted computing environments and, and, and uh, connectivity things, that, that is an issue. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's, well, I mean, I think we're looking at solutions for that that involve, you know, special programming environment, you know, sort of detecting in advance what you can support and then maybe dropping people into a text-only pairing set up um, in, in some circumstances, uh, I think that's going to, you know, n that's not going to happen immediately. Um, I mean, the other thing I think people should feel is that, that you know, 
that they don't have to, you know, just because they're attending a pairing, a pairing session that has nine people in it, that then they're, they're required to stay in that group of nine and all focus on the same homework together. Part of the idea is, is that you declare a, you know, an event, then, you know, people can split up into, into pairs or groups of three or, or you know, wh whatever works for people. I mean, uh, one of the things I, I guess I'll just highlight is I have got, uh, if I can find the right, right window, my thingy, um, where's it gone? Uh, I've added to the. Uh, that's not the right thing. Dun, 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 dun. I heard that, that um, Cloud Nine was a good environment for collaborative programming. Yeah, I think the cl Cloud Nine can work can work well. I mean, there's. Yeah, we have some people using using Cloud Nine. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of I mean, the Screen Hero. Screen Hero is is great. Um, there's I mean we've actually got in the um, Agile. Uh, ventures thing. We've got a section on pair programming and on uh, the range of there's nitrous.io. There's a whole range of tools that you can use for pair programming. Uh, we've got which one is this? Uh, I think maybe just the top level remote pair programming. So this is a good place to go where we, we just sort of list all of the um, different possible um, pair programming environments. I mean one thing uh, that's good if, if people are in Hangout and they've got a band with limitations is to get, try and use MadEye. Um, there's all different sorts of solutions. Um, but I, yeah, just to go back to the point that I was on earlier, which is uh, to edX SARS, is that you know uh, just because one Hangout started doesn't mean that you can't create another one. I mean, the the way Chrome works and Hangouts works is you're only allowed to have one Hangout at a time. Uh, but we've got a link here so that we've got the link at the top of um, the edX SARS community. One is the sort of walkthrough of how to create the pairing event and make sure that you get a hangout in the first place. There's also this link to create, happens to be an on-air hangout, but you don't have to broadcast if you don't want to. Anytime, you, you like, if, if you're in a group and it's like, oh, this is going to be noisy, you know, shall you and I go off and, and do this one, you can always create another hangout and, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, p paste that into the event and say, you know, split it up into, into three. I mean, in, in the future, maybe we will structure that more so that, um, you know, that happens automatically when the Hangouts are too large. But uh, anyway, yeah. But I very much appreciate you taking part and taking the lead in some of those sessions. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I also think that this is going to be a less, uh, less frequent thing uh, as we advance in our course. Because, you know, at, at the start, at the beginning, there will be a, a lot of uh, people who are, you know, experimenting. But as you move on, yeah. next four months, there's going to be only, only, you know, People with serious intentions uh, are gonna remain. Well, uh, yeah, I think that there's an extent to which you know people who yeah. have a technologically challenged, so to speak. Yeah. Will, that. You know, but, uh, unfortunately, you know, we, we would like to take everybody to completion in the course, but but yes, I think um, that will change. But I, I think um, uh, I almost thought what you were saying there, level me, was that um, you know maybe there would be less pairing going on later. I, I think we would certainly no, encourage. I pairing. Say, no, but I think we are, we, what you're saying is that there may be less churn in the yeah. pairing sessions as yeah, a result of you know. Na but naturally, the more serious people will stay, stick with it for longer. I think that's probably true uh, as well. Yeah, I'd certainly encourage you to keep on uh, pairing and uh, you know do. Uh, you know, everybody's welcome to connect with me on Skype, and uh, you know if you ever have any issues and I mean I, I do try and monitor all of the um, uh, pairing sessions going on and you know you know give assistance where I can. Um, but if you know, I can't, I can't always do that. I, I do have a live line on Skype. There's a, we've got a, um, some chat rooms and things specifically related to remote pair programming. So uh, if you connect to me on um, uh, Skype, I'm just pasting my my username is tan t a n s a k u. I'm just pasting that into the group chat there. Um, you know, we can stay connected, and uh, I'll, I'll be very happy to help you out with any issues that come up. Usually in text chat, I should add. I'm, I'm a big fan of text chat. Uh, don't usually have so much time for it doing you know audio audio visual calls, but I, I will be doing these group tour sessions weekly. Uh, and, I, and I think it is the head of the hour, and uh, so I think we'll wrap that up here. Uh, I'll click the end broadcast button.